this video, we're going to be talking about violence in movies. No, not this type of violence. This type of violence. I stun this motherfucker! Now there's a lot of people out there that always complain and fight against the inclusion of violence in film. They always talk about how we have to protect the children from corruption, or that violent movies always lead to violent behavior in real life. These people don't understand that filmmakers use graphic violence not to corrupt their children, but as a way to aesthetically and functionally enhance a story. It's not there just cause. And before you say anything, I know that there are movies out there that are graphically violent for the sake of being violent. The trend from a few years back of torture porn is an example of this. What I'm going to be discussing is how violence is implemented in film as a storytelling device that helps audiences feel a certain emotion. I have five things I want to talk about, but they all lie under one umbrella term. These aren't technical or academic terms in any sense, but it's what I use colloquially. I call these violent scenes, remember me scenes, or holy shit moments. The remember me term is essentially the movie grabbing the audience by the shoulders, shaking them, and yelling at them, remember me. This is important. For some reason or another, this violence is important to the story. Remember me. The holy shit moment is pretty self-explanatory. It just makes the viewer go, holy shit. The first method is using violence to show the horror of real life events. This is generally used to convey to the audience just how brutal this was in real life and to respect all the people that went through this ordeal. This is used to amazing and raw effect in movies like Saving Private Ryan and Black Hawk Down. The way that Spielberg lingers on these soldiers suffering and fighting for their lives really drives home the point that war is hell. The second way filmmakers use violence is to explore a character through their actions. This is generally used for the villains of movies, and using this method is especially effective for villain introductions. The audience doesn't know anything about this person yet, so the filmmakers want to capture just how evil and horrible this person is in the shortest time possible. One of the most memorable and powerful examples of this is in No Country for Old Men. We first see Anton Chigurh getting arrested, along with this weird oxygen tank thing. Then comes one of the most brutal death scenes in the movies, due to its lack of music, how long the take is, and the deranged look on his face. When he escapes, he pulls over a car and shows the audience just what the oxygen tank can do. In the span of three minutes, we learn that this guy is a calm and methodical killer with no remorse. The third method is to mark an important event, usually one that is a turn in the story. It's essentially an exclamation point on a scene, making the audience remember it for the duration of the film. An example of this is in Drive. Up to this point, Carrie Mulligan's character doesn't know what the driver is capable of. However, in just a few seconds, the driver reveals his true nature to her in bloody fashion. This is the junction point of the plot. After this pivotal scene, the driver changes from the defense to the offense. The fourth is one of shock and awe. This is usually in scenes that have been building up throughout the entire movie. This happens quite often in revenge films where the point is that at the ending, the protagonist has exacted revenge. It acts as a movie long fuse that climaxes with this violent spectacle, which is really satisfying and gratifying for the audience. An example of this is in the now iconic 50 cal machine gun scene at the end of Rambo. The entire movie has been showing these soldiers as being terrible human beings, so the logical, vengeful end is seeing John Rambo eviscerate the entire army with gory results. The final way is for humor. Violence, blood, and gore is usually meant to make the viewer uncomfortable and uneasy. Some films use this to their advantage and juxtapose it with something really ridiculous, making the intense violence funny. 
Some movies do this by turning up the violence to an absurd level like Evil Dead and Brain Dead. Others just make the situation hilarious, even though it's incredibly violent. One of my favorite examples would be in this Pulp Fiction scene. John Travolta's gun accidentally goes off and kills the passenger. However, instead of the normal reaction of panic and dread of taking a human life, Jules and Vincent just whine and complain about messing up the car and having to clean it. So those are just a couple of ways that violence is leveraged by creators and filmmakers to enhance their storytelling. But if those people are right about corruption and violence, I have successfully corrupted everybody watching this video right now. Thanks for watching. Are you okay?